In this video, we are going to talk about gesso. Everything you will ever need to know about it. And I am going to use this as an example. This is from a brand called Camel, alright? And it is called Artist Gesso. Comes in a jar of 500 ml. 500 Indian rupees is the MRP per price fluctuates, doesn't matter. What matters is things that we are going to cover in this video. That is, actual review of this product. If it's any good or not, or we should be looking for some different brands of Gesso, right? Then I'm going to say, what is Gesso? Alright, there is a product. Professional artists use it. They use it to prepare their canvases. But why do I need it? What if I don't use it? Is it going to give me any disadvantages? What if I do use it? Is it going to give me any advantages? Because uh, don't you think it better should give you some advantages because you are putting your time and money to it? It should better give some, right? All these things. And then I'm going to say you how you can use this product. Well, I am not going to demonstrate it, but I am going to educate you enough so that you can use it on your own, right? And then I'm going to share my opinion, experience, this, that, work around, while I do if I do, some tricks, tips, all these things. The thing is, loads of information, but in beginner's language, this is a beginner oriented video, means I'll be saying everything in layman's language, alright? Let's do it. Now, the first topic is review of this product from the brand Camel. They call it Artist Gesso 500 ml, and this is the only quantity variant available. So, if you want to buy this product from this brand, 500 ml is the only quantity, comes at a price around 500 rupees. All right, now see, this is a gesso, a simple co composition gesso. Nothing rocket science going on here. It does a job. You can go for it. I have used it. You can use it too. No problem. It does a job. It is fantastic product. No problem. Alright? You can use this one for acrylic and oil colors. Good to go in both ways. And you can also use it for various surfaces like wooden panel, uh, hard panel, canvases, stretched canvas, canvas board. All these. No problem at all. Right? But... If you feel like you have a different preference, you prefer different brand, expensive, cheap, you have a different budget, you can go for some di different as well. Uh, for example, in India, you can go for uh, Liquitex, you can go for Winsor Newton, Montemart, Brustro, Golden. See, the thing is, there are plenty of options, but I have never used anything apart from this. So I won't be able to review those in my personal level. But if you buy this one, I can assure you, you will never have any problem in the life when it comes to gesso. You can count on me, right? The product is fantastic, trust me. Now, the review is done. Product is fantastic. But, why do we need it? What is this thing called gesso? Well, gesso is nothing but a layer in between your canvas, your surface in which you are painting, and your actual paint. See here, this is your canvas or wooden panel, doesn't matter. This is a surface. Then comes gesso, a layer. This. And then comes your actual paint, acrylic, oil, doesn't matter. But, okay, I said it, it's a middle layer. But why do I need it? What's the point of it? Why uh, some professional artists use it to prepare their canvas in, uh, before painting? Why? Well, let me give you an example to make everything clear. Everything will come into picture in just two minutes. Suppose you are a girl. Alright, let's say you are a girl and you use makeup. Then you must have heard of a thing called primer. Uh, people use it before applying makeup in their faces. So you may know the difference when you prime your face and then you use makeup and when you don't prime and then you use makeup. There's got to be some difference. Let's take one more example for everyone. Walls. Our house's walls. Maybe sometimes we saw someone painting a wall or maybe sometimes we did one. If it's a new wall, a raw wall, there's a thing that we do before proceeding to actually paint it. That's called priming. We prime the wall first before painting, before applying the actual paint. This is nothing but primer for our canvases. Now think about in the, those two scenarios, why are we using primer? To make the surface more even, 
to make the surface more smooth to make the paint stick look vibrant look more beautiful in both cases doesn't mat matter right see here scientifically what is happening this is a raw wall right it has some pores in it it is rough coarse uneven it has some crevices which needs to be filled in order to proceed with the actual painting it has some holes in it so what happens when we don't prime it and start painting on it our paint is going to get soaked and at the end of the day you will figure out your house's walls are being so dull although you use top quality materials top quality paints like uh, asian paints and narrow leg and all those ultima and ultra shit i'm sorry uh, all those things but at the end of the day you figure out your paint house walls are being so dull well you are missing one step that is called priming you have to use primer when you prime it you are doing nothing but blocking the area surface making it more smooth even you are sealing those pores you are filling those holes and crevices now what happens when you paint on it the application first of all the application is going to be enjoyable smooth why because the surface is now much smoother than before earlier it was rough now we have filled all those pores and crevices with primer right now when you paint on it, none of your paint is going to get soaked. None of your paint is going, going to get underneath because there is a protective layer which is helping us. That's called primer. At the end of the day, what happens is you see your wall glowing, vibrant, lustrous. Now all those Ultima and Ultra thing is working, right? See, same thing happens in art world, uh, art world as well. Suppose this is your canvas. Well, this is, this is a raw canvas. This is the reason why I gave the example. Maybe you never filled a canvas in your life before. What happens is, this canvas is made up of nothing but cotton threads, most of the time. All right, your t-shirt is breathable, has some holes in it, pores in it, right? Same as well, to some extent, don't compare it. What happens when you paint on it, doesn't matter acrylic or oil, your pigments are going to get lost in this cotton threads, these holes. Your paint is going to get soaked. After all, it's nothing but cotton. It's going to get soaked. Alright. And at the end of the day, same thing. Ah, a dull painting. I don't like it. Although you gave uh, so much money to buy top quality paint like uh, Artist Kate Win Winson & Newton. Artist Kate products like paints. But your painting is so faded. Dull. Not at all vibrant. You can't post those on Instagram. Nobody's going to like it. So what you have to do is, in order to get likes on social media, first you prime it. Don't get your brain twisted by this thing called gesso. Gesso is nothing but primer. Primer is more subtle word, I guess. Gesso is a little bit fancy word, but fine. So when you prime it, when you gesso your canvas, you are doing nothing but making the surface even, smooth, filling those pores, crevices, blocking those holes. And now when you paint on it, None of your pigments are going to get lost. All your pigments are working, will be working. And at the end, you will see your painting is so vibrant, so bright. Earlier, the second thing, earlier, when you didn't gesso it, primed it, you could have used five to six to seven to eight layers of paint to get a, a bright painting. All right, eight layers of paint eight coats of paint acrylic oil doesn't matter to get a bright painting lustrous painting now you just have to give two to three layers because you are using a thing called gesso now even two to three layers will give you a brighter painting overall see see the advantage here and the disadvantage of not using gesso so now once you figured out that you are going to use gesso because it has some disadvantage and you want to ignore those let me tell you how you can use it well the application is pretty simple just like you paint there are a few things to consider that is what i'm going to say to you first of all maybe you are like me we paint vertically on an easel right you can see that in this case we are going to paint it horizontally flat on the ground or on a table right and then we are going to paint on it with a gesso all right now second thing we have to use at least two to three layers of this two to three coats 
the more the code, the more the effect. But that doesn't mean you are going to apply 10 codes. Not required. Nonsense. One code won't be that effective. My recommendation would be two codes at least. Two is the sweet spot. But the third thing to consider, that is after every code, you have to wait for a time, for a certain time. That's called drying time. Everything has a drying time. This one, out of my experience, I'm saying, has a drying time around 24 to 48 hours. I am saying this gap because it depends on the location, weather, climate. So wait at least for 24 hours, all right? So now, your canvas, first layer, wait for 24 hours, 48 hours. Second layer, wait for 24 to 48 hours and then paint on it. It's a lengthy process, but you know what? Pain and gain. What you're gaining is a bright painting, okay? Now, fourth thing to consider. Don't get overwhelmed by seeing other artists if they are using some specific brush for gessoing. You don't have to do that. You're a beginner. Use whatever brush that you have. If you have a hog hair brush, a stiffer brush, this is a hog hair brush. This, uh, the bristle of it is coarse and hard, rough, stiff. Alright, if you have it, fine. If you don't, use any kind of brush that you have. Even a synthetic one will do. Alright, no problem in that. And... Uh, Fifth thing to consider, if you find this a little bit thicker, you are finding it hard to spread on the canvas with a brush, you can use a little bit of water, no problem at all. You can use water to thin it, dilute it, don't use excess of water, just a little bit. Dip your brush, then use a towel, and then start painting on it. That's it. Now, there is one more topic that I have to discuss before going to opinion and experience section. That is, can you use your actual white acrylic or oil paint instead of this? Why I'm saying this? Because by appearance, they look the same. Let me show you. You see what is this? This is nothing but white paint. Yeah, as I said, by appearance, they are same. You see? Nowadays, there are lots of variety though. This is a traditional gesso, white, opaque. Nowadays, you can go for transparency levels like transparent, translucent, opaque. Colors like blue, pink, black, white, this, that, this, that. But the thing is, they are all going to work the same. No problem, you can go for whatever you have, right? Now, can you use that white paint instead of this and save some money? Well, a big no, another nonsense question. Why? Because Maybe they appear same, but the composition is different. Please, if you find this uh, topic um, a little advanced, skip this one. I don't want you to get your brain twisted, all right? Composition here is different. This one is made up of resin. This one is made up of additive agent, solvent, adhesive. It has some adhesive in it. Your uh, actual paint doesn't have these. They are basically made of uh, two things, that is pigment and binder right there is no adhesive in that so if you use your actual white paint doesn't matter acrylic or oil again i'm saying you are not actually doing anything but painting on it that is not going to adhere as much as this can because it has some adhesive composition is different so a humble request if you really want to gesso your canvas better buy a specific product like a gesso a real gesso right Yep, so that was it. That was really it. Now, uh, my opinion, uh, I hope you get something from it. I'm going to say my opinion and that is I never use gesso. Well, I said so many good things about it, but still I don't use gesso. Not at all. I bought this one to try it. Why? Because I try pretty much everything. Why not? And I would recommend you as well to try things. Maybe it opens some doors for you. Even if you want to, don't want to use it, maybe borrow from your friend and use it for just once. Maybe it just opens a whole new world for you in painting. But it only applies when you're serious about art and painting and things like that, right? So why I don't use gesso, although I said so many good things about it? Well, it's about preference. Every painter is different, right? You have to find your preference. When I started painting it, I figured out there is a thing called gesso. Well, used it one time, realized I don't need it. Why? Because I'm a different kind of painter, as I said. Everyone is different. There are two reasons why I don't use it. First of all, I like rough canvases. I like the texture of it. 
Second thing is, I paint from my imagination, visual memory. I don't have a reference with me. So what happens is, I have to do all the work. When I sit in front of a blank canvas, you know, empty canvas, when I sit in front of it, I have no idea what I'm going to paint in it. I have to figure out everything, like what? Perspective, dimension. I have to make my own scenery. Why? Because I don't have a reference, as I said. I have to figure out my highlights, myth, shadows, um, colors, saturation level, contrast, chroma, values, all these things. These all are mine. I'm an independent painter here because I don't have a reference. I am not restricted. I am not bound to follow a reference. I can do whatever I want. When you do this, it takes time. It takes time to form a scenery out of your imagination. So what happens, by the time when I figure out what I have to do with the painting, I have already covered this whole surface with actual color. Now there is no pores, holes in it. Yes, I am using my actual color to fill those pores and holes, but what can I do? I have to do it. At the end, I am going to paint from my imagination. I'm sorry for that. I am fumbling a little bit now. I have been speaking for 16 minutes straight. You see this painting? A bottle? Well, uh, this is my bottle. The only thing I, I had when I started painting it was the subject. But I didn't know what to do with it. Like uh, the background. I thought I'm gonna make a background like I'm going to literally make my window. That would be much uh, more like a really bad background in my opinion. Then I went a subtle background, a neutral color background, made a shadow as well, uh, the bottle is now popping out, made a blue cover instead of like there is no blue cover in here. All these things, these things take time. I started painting this uh, in the month of March, this year, but I wasted just two or three weeks just to figure out what I have to do with the painting. By the time I already covered the whole thing with actual color, five to six layer, and then I started painting on it. Little by little, I built up where I am today with this painting. 15 to 16 layers already done, and I'm going to do more. If you feel like that painting is complete, well, you are wrong because uh, I am going to pump a little high uh, the, in the actual bottle. I feel like a little bit highlight won't hurt. So three to four more layers, see? So what's happening here? I see that painting every day and I figure out what, uh, what more I can do with that painting and not. If I would have a reference, straight, sure shot, you do this, that, this, that, bang. But since I don't have anything, I can play with it, right? Every painter is different. That's what I'm saying here. So don't get uh, overwhelmed, don't mimic other artists, even though you see them uh, in YouTube, just like you are seeing me right now. But just because I don't use it, that doesn't mean you will not use it. Try it for you, see what you like and not, and then decide. Little by little, you're gonna grow as well, right? Well, that was it. All right, one tip for you, a really good tip. When you buy your canvases, there are two kinds of canvases in the market, one is, pre-primed canvas all right and then non-primed canvas when you buy pre-primed canvas primed canvas you don't have to prime it makes sense right but this only applies when you buy a top quality canvas like uh, you can go for camel in india camel nice i have used it once but um, it was like beyond me the uh, price are just way too high so I just bought one just to try it if it's any good and it was brilliant, it, it, it was a brilliant canvas but price was three times what I am using right now. And then you can go for Fredericks, Blake, uh, Arches, Windsor Newton, there are tons of options. If you buy a top quality canvas, it's going to be pre-primed but see the description, this top quality brand always write in the description what they are and what not, Is it, if it's pre-primed or not primed, how many layers of primer and all these things, of gesso, primer, gesso, whatever. Right, but if you're like me, you buy from local market, cheaper ones, the cheapest one possible, generic brand. Although they will say it has been primed, but the thing is, primer is very low quality and it is not at all even. Somewhere you will find it is still raw, somewhere double coated. So if you really want to prime it, just so it better, give a good layer to it. All right. <sighs> that was literally everything you should know as a beginner about this thing called the chest saw. Right, but if you feel like you still have a question, maybe you caught me wrong somewhere because I was fast or fumbling here and there, this like that, because I don't really write a script. Just have it, just deliver it. 
Anyway, if you have a question, comment. Alright, I'll help you. Good.